and the sense that there are things around that you aren't, you're kind of aware of, but not 100% aware of. And so the next, the next few films are, are in that vein. Um, the first ones, there are a couple of ekphrastic poems that I've brought, poems about paintings, and this is one of them, although it, you don't necessarily need to know about the painting, I think, to um, for it to work. Um, but it's, uh, I went to a writer's retreat a while back, and they had, look, it's, a, it's an artist retreat as well, and for music, and um, they had lots of paintings in the house, because obviously people, when they go there, the painters, they'll, they'll leave something to say thank you, and there was a picture in a quite unobtrusive place, like beside the kitchen <laughs> door or something like that, of a, a horse, um, a big horse, but I've been a horse, and I've uh, been riding it for most of my life. But there was a picture of a horse, a racehorse, jumping a fence, but there was no rider, but the animal was kind of gathered in the way that it could only, would only be in that shape if a rider was holding it in that shape. And so, uh, sort of took my eye, and this was written in response to it. It's by a Northern Irish painter called Nicola Russell. Um, poems called Ghosts. As lines are steered through language, and feet tread rooms that we cannot hear their bitter patter, and we follow the tracks of tires through mist-thrown fields to the rushes at the water's edge, which won't, to human eyes, separate themselves from their reflections, cross-hatching like the shades that muster a single hue. Somebody is surely steering you, riderless thoroughbred pinned to open air above the wall, on out into the lake's electric blue. So that's what I mean, really short poems, <laughs> really long introduction. Um, what we hear about poetry. Uh, I actually met a guy while I was there, uh, a painter who I did some, I did a kind of collaboration with. So I'm not going to read one of the poems that I did with him, but uh, he is, it was such a bizarre transaction. He's a Scottish painter. He lives in Northern Ireland and <laughs> a Northern Irish poet who lives in Scotland. And so uh, we had to do the. He was having an exhibition, and I wrote some poems to go along with the paintings that he was exhibiting. <laughs> And we had to do a lot of it, like he would send me JPEGs or, or printouts of, of his paintings. Um, but a lot of what happened in between was we had phone calls, <laughs> long, long phone calls uh, about what we were going to do and how I might approach responding to his work. And in one of these phone calls, he said to me, um, I don't know how it came up, but he said that he was really embarrassed by a lot of the paintings that he'd sold when he was younger and that he would like to go into people's houses and steal them back <laughs> because, because it, or, but well not steal them back but actually like pay them back the money that they they'd paid for them because he thought that they'd been ripped off <laughs> with the stuff that he he thought was shit um and so this, this poem came out of that called vigilante and it's written i uh, uh, Took a notion for a while for writing in kind of weird semi uh, or sort of voices of strange kind of authority. You know, so this poem's not written in my voice. It's the closest voice that it would be written in is that guy Nick, what do you call him of Crime Watch? You know, that, <laughs> that, that kind of strange um, voice that would, uh, pervades all of our lives and kind of tries to tell us what to think. Vigilante. There has been a series of break-ins. In each, a mendacious work was stripped from a wall, in a house, in a terrace, in a cityscape, through which the artist, like some latter-day Hansel, and lured by the pairings of his rotten soul, from avenue to close to street, was dragged, we gather, on this orgy of destruction. A sorry affair. Though we cannot guess at his mental state, we hope this basic reconstruction may breathe, periphery, the nature of his crimes. Data is minimal, 
barring the fact the raid happened several years ago, to judge by the limits of the paintwork and the out-of-date currency in scrolls that was left in a cubby of every house. Are you affected? Are you a victim? Why not check your glory hole? This man is armed with pap and dangerous. Yeah. Please note, however, that this is just an artist's impression of an artist. His profile is unknown, as not one citizen recalls his name or what the image was they used to own. Um, <laughs> I'd rather... Uh,